was a beautiful, clear day. It was even clearer than today. It was just not a cloud in the sky. And we were thankful and we said, oh, you know, thank you God for getting rid of the smoke. And we're so happy that things are starting to get back to normal. And I stuck my head out the front door and the sky was on fire. It was, it was like within an hour, it had just changed so quickly. We just said, okay, it's time to go. Our car was full of, of kids and dogs and cats. My one daughter went upstairs and packed into like a large shopping bag, every single Beanie Boo that she owned and stuffy. And she was really upset that we wouldn't let her take them all. And so what we did was we went and we put them in the basement and said, this is the basement, this is, you know, the concrete room in the furthest corner where if the house burns down, this will be the last thing to go, so. The first Sunday that we were all evacuated was the 8th. So um, Bishop Fraser and um, Bishop Jane Alexander from Edmonton arranged for everybody to meet at um, St. Augustine's Church in Edmonton. So all of us who hadn't seen each other since um, Sunday, and we had no idea what our houses were like, and we had no idea where some of our friends were from church or family, got to meet together in this church in Edmonton. And, it was completely, um, completely wonderful and welcoming. It's a, a wonderful comfort to know that wherever we are, basically in the world, we could go to an Anglican church and be welcomed. So, <laughs> it's a, I think that's one of the reasons I love being an Anglican, so. We had been meeting in talking circles to discuss various issues and, uh, and various things that were going on with uh, the future of the Indigenous Church in Canada. Uh, we were dreaming the, dr the dream. <laughs> That's why we had met, to dream the dream. I agree. 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 When all of a sudden someone who was sitting on the edge of the outside of the uh, of our meeting tent said, look, and everybody went outside, about 120 people uh, went outside and right above our tent, eagles were flying. And for us, for that moment in time, uh, that is beyond coincidental. That was for us. It was a creator God saying that he had heard our prayer. He had heard our plea. And so that was the, the moment <laughs> that, that I wanted to share with you. The first family arrived on New Year's Day. Um, Rob, our minister, went to the airport, picked them up on New Year's Day, and brought them to Port Coburn. It was it was it was uh, a very exciting day for everybody, I think. 
It, it's been a real uh, group effort, though, on the part of our parish. We had a whole team of people working. You know, someone designated to help them with their health care, someone uh, with their finances, myself, other people setting up the apartments and getting the furniture and the household needs. So it, it's been a real group effort. Getting to know them and talking with them and going through the ordeal that they've experienced um, has made me appreciate so much more of the things that I have and um, how fortunate we are to live in a country where we're free to say what we want to say and do what we want to do um, and not live in fear. They have nothing, but, but they're willing to give what they do have. It's more than a friendship now. We're, we're family. One day put her arms around me and said, you're my sister here in Canada. So that was very touching, you know, to feel that close to someone who was a complete stranger to me a couple of months ago. For me personally, it, I, I can say that it was, it was probably uh, one of three or four conversion experiences in my life in that I, I was invited by my then Bishop Greg Kerr Wilson to go as a clergy member of the diocese to the, the regional um, TRC hearings that were taking place in Regina. But I got to go and, and was one of three, three identified people with collars on in a, in a crowd of five or six hundred for a day of, of very heartfelt and painful testimony. And so what we found, uh, we all kind of, those of us with collars all sat in, in the same row. And what we found is that over, over a five hour period, whenever anybody needed to testify to or about the church, they actually turned their bodies and, and spoke directly to us. So in the moments of, of receiving uh, these generations of pain and feelings of worthlessness and uh, and hatred that the church had act actively been a part in just kind of broke me open. It hit me that our church bells used to tell a different story than they do now. We, we sometimes ring it to call people to worship, but they used to be for everything. If there was an emergency, they would be rung. If there was a celebration, they would be rung. If they needed to get people together, church bells would be rung. Uh, and so I wondered what it would look like if we, if we as a congregation here, um, over a period of time, rang our bells once for every missing and murdered Indigenous woman on the, uh, on the RCMP's list. Now, what I didn't realize at the time was that, uh, was that Private Fred was putting together plans for the 22 days campaign and that part of that meant that that there were already deans that were meeting together trying to figure out how to be involved in that so it, it it's one of those opportunities where where the spirit moves and you don't even know it and and something that that was birthed here um, god worked in that and and managed to to spread it out over the whole country During the, during the four weeks that we were ringing bells, we, we saw a change in the crowd. Uh, we had a few, a few kind of curious church folks that turned up the first time, and then the second time we had businesses downtown that would release their employees for part of the afternoon to come and ring with us. Uh, the third time and the fourth time, we actually had members of not only the activist community here in Regina, but, but surprisingly um, we had, well, it wasn't even surprising because we live in the neighborhood that we live in, but we hadn't anticipated that there would be family members showing up people who had lost, you know, whose, whose moms and grandmas and daughters and aunties and sisters were on that list from our own neighborhood. And so they had the opportunity to come and ring bells and yell out the names of their loved ones as they rang. And that gave us the opportunity to, to, to approach with some care and some, some compassion and start relationships. We're continuing to build on the relationships that were formed in the, in the four weeks of ringing together.
If the process raises our awareness of some of the injustices that have happened in our church relationships, then we have gained. There are very few issues that Anglicans face that are easy. But where does justice start and end with economy? I would urge you to pay serious attention to our historical roots. Please continue to tell your stories. Our patience is running very, very thin. You are really beautiful. You are smashing. Get up, get out, and get lost. Our story is really important for us to preserve for other purposes than dispersing information. exaggerate this, but I think our church has truly been renewed in the Spirit of God. To our primate, um, I've always known he was a good man. I told him here that I've watched him privately pray. I've watched him walk hand in hand with Native people, and I know that God provided a person of his stature to be with us at this union. Thank you, one and all. The presence of the Christian community is so important for the peace process and for uh, the welfare of that region. Here now on Sunday morning, we are together for the love of the world. You see that hand? The moccasins we wear to walk, and it is our dream and wish that we will continue to walk together with you. And also, the feet, the, the moccasins keep the feet warm. Every time I announce something lost, it's miraculously found. It's magic, just magic. Just magic, sir. Simply put, together, the church is a people's movement. The spirit of hope that is embodied by PWRDF staff and supporters is carried far and wide as we journey with partners from around the globe to share in the creation of a more just and peaceful planet. Or maybe you call that power. This is wonderful. This is what we're all about. It's wonderful to say what we've done. We now must carry that forward. It is our responsibility to stand up for what is right and what is just. And uh, we just need to be clear in the way that we're doing that and exactly what we're saying. I invite you to give thanks for the witness that you have heard. I invite you to anticipate that when this General Synod gathers again in three years, we will have many more opportunities to give thanks.